It's a week of snow and student elections coming up on ATV News. Snow collapsed this roof, killing a man. Coming up, we'll show you what else it did. You can be stopped for that. I'll show you how much snow you need to clean off your car to avoid a ticket. It'll be exciting to see, you know, the, how it turns out. We'll show you Utah State's two firsts from this year's elections and what ranked choice is. You've been walking in snow for the past few days. In weather, I'll show you when you might be taking off your snow boots. We have two high school basketball state champions here in the Valley. I'll tell you if they are your school or they beat your school. All that and more, this is ATV News. People like to get out of the cold. It's very rare that a snow closure will happen. Our emergency crews responded and found that a partially attached garage on an older building had collapsed. When you think it's starting to get warm, then it just like snows again. It's been a weekend of storms and a week of USU elections. Welcome to this edition of ATV News. We're joining you live from outside the Eccles Conference Center. I'm Anna Johnson. And I'm Burl Johansson. A man is dead in Providence after a garage collapsed on him because of heavy snow. The Cache County Sheriff's Office says 52-year-old Rolando Castellanos Briseno of Ogden was trapped under the roof of the garage where first responders were unable to reach him. They say the roof collapse was likely re related to the heavy snowfall. We believe it's a combination of both of those things, the heavy wet snow on top and the age of the building. Peck says Castellanos Briseno was likely killed on impact. He says Castellanos Briseno was part of a crew cleaning up asbestos from the unoccupied house. The sheriff's office says his family likely resides outside the country. Heavy snowfall also led to some dangerous road conditions. This is what the roads looked like in Sardine Canyon after a storm hit Cache Valley Sunday afternoon. The buildup of snow on the roads led to several slide outs. Utah issued an emergency alert around 5 p.m. Sunday night another around 7 p.m. Monday night, and one this morning at 2 a.m., requiring approved traction devices for all vehicles driving through the canyon. UDOT's Twitter account says they reported no crashes in the Cache Valley area. Three cars were involved in an accident on Logan Main Street this afternoon. Police say it was a non-weather related accident. This truck and motorhome were towed out after they ended up in a ditch. Police say no one went to the hospital. Poor road conditions may keep you indoors, but not bus drivers. Buses in Cache Valley stay running, even through winter storms. There's a lot of people that depend on the buses running, so we'll run all day, even through the snow. Bus drivers say it can be even busier after snowstorms because more people are trying to get out of the cold. They say driving in the winter is always a concern, but the buses handle snow better than other cars. We're heavier and we've got bigger tires, so we've got more traction than cars. Cape says having experience driving in the snow is important for bus drivers, but being cautious is more important. Poor road conditions may not be the only thing keeping you from driving. It may be your own parking lot. I had to shovel the whole thing last week and it was quite the workout. Parking lots are full of snow. Almost weekly winter storms and cold temperatures have caused a buildup of ice on the road. USU's Parking and Transportation says after the weekend storm, they decided to clear the whole parking lot at Aggie Village. I had to shovel the whole thing last week and it was quite the workout. Clevin says this is the first time they have asked people to move their cars to clear a parking lot in over six years. Zara Nasir joins us live to tell us just how much snow we saw. Zara? Well guys, it's been pretty cold the past few days. We had a snowstorm last night and some snow flurries this morning. But I guess the more snow, the better for skiers. In skiing resort areas, Beaver Mountain reports 19 inches of snow in total in the past 24 hours, while Cherry Peak reports 12 inches of snow in the same amount of time. That sounds like a lot of snow, guys, but it's definitely good for the skiers. Oh, I'm sure they're enjoying the powder, but as long as they clear off their windshields before they get drive-in, it should be good to go. How much snow do you think you legally have to clean off your car before you can drive it? Katie Varga found out and she shows us how unscraped cars can be dangerous. 
scraping off your windshield might be a chore for you in the morning. But if you don't scrape off enough, you could get a ticket. A law that just states that you can't have an obstructed view, um, and that kind of pertains to, you know, being able to see clearly out of your uh, your front windshield and stuff like that. On my way to work, I set up a camera to see how many people were driving around with covered windows from the snowstorm the night before. Okay, that person, their back windows are completely covered, so I don't know how he's looking through his blind spots. This person right here only has part of his windshield scraped off, which is actually illegal. You're running late and you kind of see those people that scrape that little like little peephole basically on the front window and they can kind of see but they can't see anything else without that so that would be considered an obstructive view right because you don't have that full view of you know everything that's coming at you from the left and to the right in 10 minutes of driving i saw five cars with snow covered windows on my route to work on a facebook group called cash valley 411 users commented on a photo of a car covered in snow and said don't be this guy and others said i don't see anything wrong with the picture i don't want to scrape it all off either but like we're all driving on the roads together, so like, I want them to be able to see me, too. To prevent ice and snow from getting on your windshield in the first place, you can use a windshield cover, like this one, or a towel works as well. Gordon says there's no specific Utah law about how much snow can be on your car, but... If you do leave the snow on top of your car and it is creating a safety hazard for other motorists, and a trooper or an officer ends up seeing that you can be stopped for that. Gordon says to take your time in the morning to defrost and scrape off your car because it's basic safety and could prevent a crash. Katie Varga, ATV News. Gordon says if it's too snowy outside, avoid driving, especially if you can't see clearly through your car windows. If you think it's cold outside, imagine not being able to go inside and warm up. Morgan Perkins shows us her family farm to see how this weather is affecting farmers and their animals. As my dad and I are driving down to the field to feed the cows, the path we plowed for our truck is a little narrower and icier than a couple weeks ago. It takes twice as long to do anything in the winter when you have this much snow. Even though our herd is little, it doesn't take away the hardships that come with this weather. Nothing wants to work right and it just, you just deal with it as being raising livestock larger operations like Murphy Livestock, they don't receive a break either. It's hard, you know, your calves are being born in puddles, they're being born in mud bogs, um, cows' teats are getting covered up in mud, uh, and then a calf can't get them to unseal, you know, so they can nurse. Not only does this affect cattle raising, but... It's an economic impact to begin with. Uh, one of the big things the last couple of weeks with the amount of wind that we have had, uh, it is just more difficult to get to the animals, get feed to the animals. So the ranchers are putting in a lot longer and harder hours. Farmers are not only spending longer hours, but more money on feed. As you can see, I'm not in business attire. While we're out here feeding, we give our cows about 40 pounds of hay a day to keep them healthy. We've had to feed a lot more this year than normal, and we're not getting as much use out of it because everybody's in mud. We have seen the ranchers have to supply more feed and, and take a little closer care of their animals based off from the increased weather. Even with all these setbacks. We are ultimately extremely grateful to be receiving all this moisture. It's hard on them, but as long as they have plenty of feed and a place to bed, the cows will do fine. Morgan Perkins, ATV News. Wollston Hulme says the cows are resilient to the cold and the farmers are even tougher. One of the things we see this time of year, other than the storms, are those signs behind me for USU campaigns. Abe Rodriguez is set to be the first Latino USUSA president in history. Rodriguez defeated Ben Swan, winning 64% of the votes. Ali Sink Mars won the executive vice president race, defeating Noah Jensen 71 to 29. Tyson Packer defeated Jonah Fiegelson 58 to 42 to win the student advocate vice president position. Statewide and Senate elections close at midnight. USUSA tried a new voting system for student elections this year. I spoke with students and elections organizers to find out why they made the change. 
<laughs> students passing by heard campaigners lobby for their candidates, but did more students vote? It fluctuates every year, especially on how students want to get engaged with elections. While students like these may not vote every year, Alder hopes a new voting system encourages more Aggies to vote. I would say I'm really optimistic and happy to see how many students did get involved, especially like with ranked choice voting. This is what this year's ballot looks like. Instead of using a traditional voting system, USUSA is using ranked choice voting meaning you select an order of the candidates rather than picking your favorite ones. If you don't know who to vote for, the page loads with the default order of the candidates, meaning you can open the page, click submit, and you voted. But if you don't want to vote for a certain position, you need to click an extra box. Some students like the change. It'll be exciting to see, you know, the, how it turns out. I think it's kind of nice because, like, if your first pick doesn't get picked, you have, like, a backup that might also go into a influence them to getting picked. So it's like, at least you're not getting the worst. Alder says ranked choice voting gets rid of runoff elections, which shortens student elections in general. She says she knows it's not perfect yet. This is the first year that we're doing this, and so we are open to feedback and improving this ranked choice voting for future years. Election results will be announced tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. in the Taggart Student Center. Black USU alumni flew from different states to Utah to share their experiences with current students. Zahra Nasir shows us how their efforts have helped black students connect. Well, I'll have to give you my contact information. While exchanging contact information, students sit in groups with one alumnus at each table. Students shared their experiences from school and some challenges they face daily with the alumni. They say, it was a nice change of environment. A lot of my friends here are white, and I love them, but I just sometimes I would like to be in a room filled with people who look like me. It'll, it'll be super fun, so you guys should come. USU's Black Student Union president shared some of their upcoming projects as students and alumni ate their food. Although the food was amazing, the night was mostly about making connections. I'm hoping that the students who were here built a connection with someone who was here before them, right? Built that connection, that access to legacy, recognizing that there were alumni that are here that looked just like me, that were doing my major, that sat in classes and were the only black person in their class and overcame and dealt with that. Students took notes while listening to a speech on how to better connect and be successful. One alumnus who flew from California says the unity of a community is important. We believe that we need to hang together and uh, the thing is if we hang together we'll all do better and the thing is is that if we don't share information then uh, we won't grow as a as a group. Called and talked personally to all these people here. The organizer says she is grateful for the people working together with people like her in trying to make a difference. Zahar Nasir, ATV News. BSU meets every Thursday at the TSE and says they welcome new members. We're ready to go back inside, but before we do, here's what's coming up. The atmosphere, the vibe was just so cool, so I really wanted to bring something like that to Logan. We'll show you how black New York barbershops inspired a Logan resident to bring a little bit more culture to his hometown. We were running in and they were closing the doors. We'll show you why people were rushing to their seats and why there weren't enough to be record-breaking. Zara will join us again later in weather. The current temperature is 28 degrees. Can you consent with me? Imagine what you'd see If every child had a book to read every kid across the nation Deserves a book to read And we can make it happen right now No, I don't know what you've been told But kids with books learn so much more So the mission is for us to get a book to each and every child <laughs> So let's join hands, book people unite On Earth, hidden passion Come on, we'll have a good time Hidden seeds of inspiration To motivate some magic To change the writing of the world Writing on the wall One book can make a difference One book can inspire a child One book can be the ones that will bring Helps to change a life Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition.
body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. USU tried and failed to break a world record and left some people out in the cold in the process. I found out why you might not have been able to get in on the record. That's the sound of nearly 3,000 people dunking cookies in milk at the same time. They were trying to break the Guinness World Record for most cookies dunked in milk simultaneously, but... We didn't even get enough people in the building. We were really, you know, about 500 people off. The 2,799 tickets scanned at the time of the dunk weren't enough to break the record, even before accounting for people who didn't participate or who dunked their cookies incorrectly. But what went wrong? I think one of the issues with why we didn't hit our our goal is that it was held over President's Day weekend when a lot of people were out of town and just out doing other things. Part of the reason it didn't really happen was because a lot of people were waiting outside and a lot of people hadn't gotten seat, like seated yet. Smith says at the time of the cookie dunk, the line to get in stretched from this entrance here all the way back to here. I bet we totally would have had the shot if we had done it maybe at the end of the meet. Why did they close the doors at the end of the first rotation? Why not wait until more people came? We had to stop letting people in at the door because we had to have the most accurate ticket count at the time of the attempt. We didn't really have the opportunity to wait because we had to have so much access to the floor to be able to get the photos and video footage that we needed. Even though they were trying to break a record, Nash says the meet was still their priority. From our perspective, like, yes, we're doing the cookie record, but we're also hosting a gymnastics meet. Despite failing to break the record, he said he was happy with the turnout. Ash says they've talked about trying to break the record again, but they're not planning on it anytime soon. Welcome to ATV Weather. I'm Zahara Nasir. Let's look right into the National Raider. So if you look at the National Raider, you'll see that over here in the, in the northeastern side, there is going to be a lot of snow showers. There's two colors in this Raider, the green representing the rainfall and the dark blue, or you could say purple, representing the snow. And if you take a look on this side of the west, northern, the west side of the map, you can see that there's also going to be a little bit of snow showers in California going into Nevada and probably that's the storm that we're going to be see coming in to Utah later this week. Now let's take a look at the state raider. If you take a look at the state raider you can see that there isn't really much happening down here in the south but up here in the north there is like a lot of snowstorms happening up here in Logan right where we are and also in Ogden and Salt Lake City. Let's take a look at the seven-day forecast. In the seven-day forecast, you can see that we've been having a lot of snow showers. Today, we had some snow in the morning and also tomorrow. But on Thursday, we'll probably have a better weather with some sun to warm us up just a little bit, but probably not quite a bit because we'll have a low of 12 degrees. And coming into the weekend, you'll see that we're going to have still that much snow except on saturday we might have except on saturday we might have no snow which will give us a little bit time for cooling and taking off those snow boots while we prepare ourselves for the weekend where we'll have even more snow well you're all caught up in weather back to you at the desk boneyard barbering is one of the only black owned shops here in logan does it succeed in bringing the black new york barbershop experience 
Marcus Lamb lets the barber and his customers tell the story in their own words. You've been skiing since you got some snow this week? Oh yeah. I've just been trying around every spot I could find, trying to find the best one. And Boneyard's the place that I found the best. I think growing up in Logan, there wasn't a lot of good barber shops. Like I didn't really know what a good haircut was or a bad haircut. I just thought you, you know, go and get your haircut. I realized I wanted to become a barber was when I was out doing summer sales. I went to New York and I saw tons of cool barber shops out there. The atmosphere, the vibe was just so cool. So I really wanted to bring something like that to Logan. We've had so many different people come in here, whether it's a man or even we get women that come in here. <laughs> Something different between each person. It's different hair type, different hair color, different everything. So I've got tight curly hair, got the straight hair, got it all. I trust my stylist. He does the right job. The original Boneyard was just the hangout spot. It's the same posters here, it's the same music I'm listening to still. Like 2000s uh, throwbacks is, is our go-to here. It's a nice, chill place. Like how it's built, the, the vibe that it gives. Just super comfortable and everyone's just laid back is kind of what I want. If you have a place that you like, go there. But if you have a place close by that you like, it's better to search around and explore. And spend less money, might as well just try it out. We take almost double the time on a haircut to make sure it's perfect, and I think that's what leads to people coming back, you know, over and over again. It's better than great clubs. Marcus Mays says when he designed the Boneyard, he wasn't copying black barbershops as a whole. Everything from the Jordans to the posters was an expression of himself. Now, I don't know. I, I typically go to Super Clips. I, I mean, do you know anybody that's gone to Boneyard? I haven't. So, actually, I follow Stephen Ashworth on Instagram. He plays for USU Basketball, and he goes there. So, I actually got an interview with him coming up. Conference wins are crucial this season as it winds down. Let's see if the Aggies were able to come out of Wyoming with a win. Guilty pleasure. Um, I love some Beyonce. Like Beyonce or Alicia Keys. He's a Beyonce fan. Find out what else Steven Ashworth does in his free time. And look for the nearest cover. So like a table or a desk. What are you going to do when the next earthquake hits? We'll show you how these kids are preparing. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. We're running it back with ATV Sports. I'm Noah Giles. The men's basketball team was on the road last Tuesday to face off against Wyoming in Laramie. We start off here with Sean Bairstow throwing a lob to Dan Akin. He finished the game with 11 points. Wyoming senior guard Hunter Maldonado drives here and gets this turnaround jumper to fall. He struggled on the night going 3 of 13 from the field. Jeremiah Odin blew by Trevin Dorius for this emphatic dunk, but it was Xavier Ducell who put the team on his back, hitting back-to-back -back threes. This one off the Maldonado kickout. Ducell led all scores with 21 points on the night. The teams went into halftime tied at 33 apiece. Coming out in the second half, Wyoming junior guard Brendan Wenzel gets this three-pointer to fall after coming off the screen. It was his only field goal of the night. Steven Ashworth brushed off the defender here for the easy two, and then junior guard Max Shulga finds a cutting Z Hamoda here for the little reverse lay-in. 
Shulga is second on the team with four assists a game. Here's another pass from Shulga, this time to Dan Akin with the Eurostep finish. Shulga then find, found Akin again, this time for the and one, to seal the game as the Aggies won 65-55. to The Aggies had the week off, so I caught up with one of the captains of the men's basketball team, Stephen Ashworth. So what's it like playing in the spectrum, right? I've been there as a student, I've filmed games and things, but as a player, what, like, what's that energy like? It's something like I've never experienced in another arena, that's for sure. Just the energy that everybody brings, and especially when that, that whole student section is packed to the top, it's just something that's super cool. And uh, really a pleasure to be able to play in front of a community and, and a crowd that cares as much as the Aggies do. Okay, stepping away from basketball a little bit now, Who's, who's the goofiest guy on the team? Like, who just messes around the most, says the funniest stuff? I'd probably say Max Shulga. He, yeah, he's just, like, he's so quick-witted, and these dudes have, like, a whole other language of sarcasm. We'll be joking around, and then he'll just say something that gets, like, everybody laughing. What's, what's, like, a guilty pleasure song that you listen to? I love some Beyonce. Like, Beyonce or Alicia Keys. Yeah, that's a guilty pleasure for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be in my house with my wife's at work and I'll just ask Alexa to play some of those songs and stuff. Steven Ashworth is a Beyonce fan. Who would have thought? Moving on to women's basketball, they were on the road this week losing both games by a combined 109 points. Grad transfer Maria Carvalho did have a game high 20 against New Mexico. The men's hockey team is heading to nationals following their two wins this week. They beat Weber, Weber State 3-2 in their eighth matchup this year to qualify for the tournament. The Skyview Bo High School boys basketball team was crowned 4A state champs on Saturday as they beat Dixie High School 52-44 in the spectrum. And on the girls' side, the Ridgeline girls basketball team took home the honors as they beat Skyview 67-43. I mean, now isn't that just awesome that like a couple of teams here in the Valley won state championships in basketball? Well, and I think the big thing, too, that helped them out a ton is it was here in the Spectrum. So a lot of their parents, a lot of their family and friends were able to come and watch them play. And that's always a huge boost. My high school was in 5A, but I did travel to see us play in one state championship game. But I don't think we won. Thanks, Noah. Yep. Utah State's geology department had their annual Rock and Fossil Day, where kids could come and learn about earthquakes, the rock cycle, and dinosaurs. Paige Johnson lets the visitors and volunteers tell the story. Rocks. 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 Today is our annual Rock and Fossil Day. It's a super fun event that we do for the community so that everybody can come and enjoy everything that there is about geology. We brought the kids to Rock and Fossil Day. They love rocks and fossils and we thought it'd be a good place to come learn more. Not everybody knows everything that a geologist can do. I'm even still learning some of the things that geologists study and jobs that they can have. And so it's such a great way to just open this world to everybody, not just the kids. We went to the earthquake one. You got to see how big you can make an earthquake by jumping. I'm in a communicating geoscience class, and we had to come up with activities as a class for an assignment, but we wanted to come up with something that would be easy and fast for the kids to uh, learn quickly and move on. We have fossil digs so they can find their own fossils in the dirt. This is mine. It's a snail. I think it's so good to expose your kids to a variety of things and I feel like there's not as many opportunities for science-based things so something like this is a great way to be exposed to more science in a variety of ways. They say they've been hosting Rock and Fossil Day since the 90s. You may have noticed how much snow we've been getting here in Cache Valley. For environmentalists, talk of the snow can also bring up the topic of the drought in Utah and how we use what Mother Nature gives us. Utah State hosted a conservation conversation with an indigenous perspective. A story told a thousand ways cannot replace the truth. The former chairman of the Northwestern Band of the Shoshone Nation started off the night by reading a poem about how the world used to work in the Shoshone villages. He spoke about how natural resources are taken for granted and how Western views have changed the way we think about those resources. My grandmother always talked about our land and animals and water as our kinfolk. 
Well, to me. Thanks for joining us on this These are edition cool. of HBO.